يا ذا الأسماء الحسنى يا خالقنا غفرانا نسألك وأنت الأسماء نأمل عفوك سبحانك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We're covering the أسماء الله الحسنى and today we're on the names of Allah السميع and البصير السميع and البصير. So هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق البارئ المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتاح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير so it's سميع and البصير now these two names of Allah عز وجل السميع means the one who hears all and Al-Basir means the one who sees all. Al-Sami'ah is Allah Azza wa Jal's name and he hears. One of the unique things about Al-Sami'ah is and Al-Basir is that Allah hears without even a... He hears and he has the ability of hearing without even there being a, 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 a noise or a sound to hear. So... What this means is that Allah was Samir before there was even any noise. And Allah is Basir, He sees everything before there's any, even anything to see or any other existence beyond Him. What this means is that we don't, when a human being or a creation, they have something in front of them to see, then only then you can call them a person who sees. When a human being is able to identify the sound and you can see that they've actually heard something, that's when you can say that this person hears something. With Allah Azza wa Jal, that, that is not the case. Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't need to, like just like with khalq as well, with creation, He doesn't need to create for Him to be the creator. He's already the creator. Before even the creation came into existence. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he's, <clears throat> Allah Azza wa Jal he's, He hears and He sees all without even having anything to apply it to. And the other thing is that Allah Azza wa Jal, when He's hearing and when He's seeing, it is not like His makhluk, like His creation. His creation need an, uh, ears to listen with. They need eyes to see with. Allah Azza wa Jal, neither has He got ears nor has He got eyes. And wherever you've got these uh, words in the, in the Qur'an, for example, Allah says that uh, with, with, um, with Musa alayhi salam وَلِتُسْنَا عَلَىٰ عَيْنِ Musa alayhi salam when he was talking to Allah Azza wa Jal and he was, he, was talking, he was asking him to give him uh, certain things and Allah said, I did you this favor and I did you that favor and I told your mother to put you into the basket and, and all that and then your enemy took, took you in his hands and Allah Azza wa Jal said that Though your enemy had you in his hands, لتصنع على عيني All the all the love that I gave to your enemy Fir'aun for you, all that was happening in front of my eye. Or whenever Allah Azza wa Jal uses that, it doesn't mean that Allah Azza wa Jal has got any resemblance whatsoever with His creation in terms of their eyes, or in terms of their hearing, or in terms of their ears and their eyes. What this means is Allah Azza wa Jal sees things. And he hears things, but they no way have any connection with how he has created his creation and the how they see things and the how they hear things. Even, even with direction, when Allah Azza wa Jal might say that I'm in front of you, or Allah might say I'm above you, or Allah might say that I've got this, I've got that in this direction, that direction. From the unseen, we, we're not supposed to believe that and we're not supposed to have the, the belief that it is only in this direction. It's only in this direction and not in that other direction and so on. So the other thing is with, with Allah Azza wa Jal is that when he, when he communicates, when he communicates with his, with his servants, his servants, uh, specifically he has, he has had a conversation with Musa alayhi salam. We all know that from the Quran. 
وَكَلَّمُ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Now here, Musa is hearing Allah Azza wa Jal who is speaking to him. This hearing that Musa had, obviously he's got human ears. What, what in one hadith is described that when he would get the kalamullah coming to him, it wouldn't be in one particular direction. When he would get the kalamullah or Allah speaking to him, it wouldn't be in one particular direction. It would be sort of a surround, uh, it would be kind of from all directions that he would, he would hear Allah Azza wa Jal. And when Musa salam said that he wants to see Allah Azza wa Jal, obviously we know that he fell to the ground because Allah Azza wa Jal, he himself in his that is too powerful. In his own existence is too powerful for anyone to, to see him in this world. Now in the Akhirah we will get to see him and we will get to hear him. We will get to see him and we will get to hear him. But Allah Azza wa Jal in this world has decided that we, will, we are not going to be the ones who will see him or hear, hear him. He is going to be the one constantly in this world, in the next world, in all over. He will see, see us and he will hear us. Now, in, having said that, Allah Azza wa Jal, when he, when he sees us, he says one of his names is Muhit. Muhit means that he covers us from all di different directions. So there's nothing that one can hide from Allah. In fact, when he hears us, whether we whisper, whether we, whether we talk, whether we say it loudly, whether we say it quietly, whether we say it in our minds, Allah still hears us. Even in our minds, Allah hears us. The thoughts in our minds, Allah sees the thoughts in our minds. Allah knows the thoughts in our minds. The intentions in our hearts, Allah sees the intentions. Allah knows the... Um, the, the, the intention that we have. That hadith in Muslim says that in Allah doesn't look at your appearances, to your faces and so on, but He looks at your hearts and He looks at your actions. Allah can see actions, Allah can see hearts. In fact, there is nothing, لا يخفى عليه شيء. Nothing at all is hidden from Him in terms of His knowledge, in terms of His sight in terms of his hearing and his or all these qualities that Allah has is complete absolutely complete there is no deficiency deficiency whatsoever any any time any moment in the in the existence of Allah and Allah's existence is is for eternal so there's no deficiency in ayatul kursi we read the ayats that say la takhudhu sinatun wa la nawm that when it's a normal creation, if they're watching, or if they're hearing, or if they're observing, they, what will happen to them is that they will have times when they will be slightly, slightly uh, you know, strenuous, they might get tired, they might have fatigue. But with Allah, there is none of that. When He's observing or He's looking after His entire creation, there is no fatigue, there is no sleep, there is nothing that slumber, whatever that comes over Him. <clears throat> now, to understand His... To understand him hearing in the, in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Mujadala, which actually opens up with قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ When the woman, she complained to the Prophet ﷺ about her husband, Allah started it off by saying, Allah has heard the speech and, the, and, and the, what that woman has said, who has put a complaint to you about her husband. Allah has heard that. Now he establishes his hearing there. When, when the Jewish individuals in Prophet's time, they said that why is Muhammad وسلم, why is he asking his companions for, for donations? Why is he doing that for? Inna Allah faqir wa nahnu aghniya. They made this statement. They said Allah is poor and we are the rich ones. If Allah was rich, then he would have enriched the Muslims. Since Allah hasn't enriched Muhammad sallallahu that means Muhammad is poor and the Muslims are poor and that means na'udhu billah, Allah, there Allah is poor. When they made that insult, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He revealed in the Quran, لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ قَوْلًا قَالُوا قَالُوا Allah has heard, heard clearly, He has heard those people who have made this statement. إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيرٌ وَنَحْنُ أَغْنِيَا That Allah is poor and they are the ones who are who are rich or they are the ones who are independent. And Allah has said, I've written down what, you've, what they've actually said. 
وَقَتْلَهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ I've also written down the, the killing of the messengers from before and so on and so forth. Allah Azza wa revealed that. But that ayah also starts with لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهِ in Surah Ali Imran. That Allah has heard the statement, the blasphemous statement that these people have made. So, in terms of anything that we've said, Allah has recorded it. And there is no, Allah doesn't need, on the Day of Judgment, Allah doesn't need the books that the angels are writing to record what we've actually said. What we've actually said, what he has heard, what he has seen. Allah doesn't need the books. Allah doesn't need the angels. Allah doesn't need the earth to testify. Allah doesn't need the sky to testify. Allah doesn't need our own hands to testify or our mouths to testify, our eyes to testify, our ears to testify, though they, this will all happen. The angels will testify, their eyes, their ears, the one's skin, one's, uh, the, one's, the, the earth under one's feet, the feet itself, the hands itself, all of it will testify on the Day of Judgment about what man has done and what man hasn't done. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He doesn't need any of this. It's not that He has to keep a record for Him to remember what He has heard and what He has seen. It's not that. Allah Azza wa Jalla can do this independently without any shuhada without any witnesses. But he does that because it gives us a reason, a, a reason to think that yes, these things are happening and I am going to be accountable for the things that I'm saying and the things that I'm, that, that I'm doing and Allah is watching me you know, do these things. When we whisper, Allah has said in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Mujadala again, the 58th Surah, مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ no three people get together and they have a secret conversation except that Allah is the fourth amongst them. وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ No five people get together and have a secret conversation. إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ Except that Allah is the sixth amongst them. وَلَا أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ No people more than the figure of three, the figure of five get together. But Allah Azza wa Jal is, with, is the next one amongst them. No wala adnami dalik. No figure of less than three get together and they have a secret conversation that but Allah is with them. Illa huwa ma'hum aynama kanu. Except that wherever they are, Allah is with them. Meaning that wherever they are, Allah sees them. Wherever they are, Allah hears them. Wherever they are, Allah knows them. Summa yunabbi'uhum bima qalu. And then on the day of judgment, Allah will. Tell them what they actually said in this world. Allah will inform us of what we actually said in this world. And Allah knows and He has kept a record of everything. And He has said in Surah Al-Mujadala, أَحْصَاهُ اللَّهُ وَنَسُوهُ He counts every single thing, every conversation He has counted. Every word He has counted, we have said. Every letter from our mouth He has counted. Every single thing we have seen, where we saw it, how we saw it, he has measured all of it. When I saw men, women forget what they actually saw, what they actually said, what they actually heard, but Allah Azza wa Jalla has recorded all of it. So in this ayah you can see that Allah Azza wa Jalla in Surah Al-Mujadala has made it absolutely clear. Even the secret, most secret conversations, Allah records it. And by recording it, it's going to be a way of him telling us on the Day of Judgment what we actually have done and what accountabilities we've got towards what we've said. Now, the intentions in our hearts, the intentions in our hearts, no matter how small they are, the things that we do in our daily lives, no matter how small they are, Allah sees it. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gives us an example that goes beyond the, even the human being. Beyond even, the, if the human being thinks that he is someone or she is someone that Allah is, you know, of course we have the belief that Allah is always watching us, but when you hear this next example, you, you say, Subhanallah al -Azim, how much Allah has recorded from what we have actually done and what we have, what we have seen ourselves and what we have heard ourselves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said that in a very dark night, now imagine that the night is completely dark, so dark that if you were to take your hand out, you wouldn't be able to see your hand. So dark that if you were to look at another person who's sitting right next to you, you wouldn't be able to sit, see the person right next to you. And there are, there are dark nights like that. I mean, I know in this place, we have lights everywhere. The imagine is so dark, because I have been in certain parts of the world where, you know, especially Bangladesh and so on, when the moonlight 
is not, you know, it's, it's those nights when the, when the moon is uh, going through the crescent. It gets so dark and there's no lamps, there's nothing there. You, all, you, all you can possibly see is some stars in the sky. But it's so dark that you don't even know what's right in front of you. So imagine Rasulullah has said, it is very dark night. And then in that dark night you have a stone, but the color of that stone is a completely black stone. So first you've got a dark night, we can't even see anything. Then you've got a black rock, you've got a black rock, and that black rock or that black stone, whichever one it is, we can't even see that. The color of that is also very dark. So even in broad daylight, yeah, you'd have to spot that somewhere. But it's, or, or if it was getting dark, you'd have to spot that. But it's really dark, so you can't even see it. And then Prophet ﷺ goes ahead and he says, In that dark night, on that black stone, is a small black ant. So that ant is not red, that ant is no other color. That ant is a black ant. And then Prophet ﷺ said that when that black ant in that dark, dark night on the black stone where no one else can even see it, no one can. Can you hear, can you hear ants when they walk? You can't hear ants when they walk. Can you hear ants when they walk? You can't. So Rasulullah said that when that ant it walks on that black stone Allah Azza wa Jal He sees the ant crawling and He hears every footstep the ant is making every footstep the ant is making now after looking at this example and this is a hadith in Sahih Muslim a person thinks well, is there anything left that Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't see or doesn't hear in Prophet this is a Sahih Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. <clears throat> in one particular house, three non-Muslims they gathered. Two of them were from Quraysh, and one of them was from one of them was a Thaqafi, so he's from Bani Saqifa. Or he said there were two people from Bani Saqifa and one person from Quraysh. They were people who had less understanding. They were people who had large stomachs. This is uh, the hadith that explains. They were people with large stomachs, ate more in life, thought less in life. One of them said to the other, suppose Allah is hearing what we are saying. The other one said, he can only hear if we speak loudly. He can only hear if we speak loudly. And if you speak quietly, he won't be able to hear us. And the other one said, well, if he's hearing when we're, if he can hear us when we're saying it loudly, then surely he must be able to hear us when we're saying it quietly. So then Allah Azza wa Jal, He revealed the verse from Surah Fussilat, ayah number 22. <clears throat> Allah revealed, وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَثِرُونَ أَنْ يَشْهَدَ عَلَيْكُمْ سَمْعُكُمْ وَلَا أَبْصَارُكُمْ وَلَا جُلُودُكُمْ you will not be able to hide or cover or try to cover. Tastatiruna means you're going to try to cover. Your own hearing, forget me hearing you. Allah is saying, forget me hearing you. Your own ear is going to speak to me on the day of judgment and tell me what you heard. Forget me seeing you, your eyes are going to tell me what your eyes actually saw. And forget me knowing what your bodies have done, but your own skins are going to speak to me on the Day of Judgment about what you have, what you have committed. Now this ayah was revealed, and this is a Sahih Hadith in Bukhari, and in Muslim amongst many other books. What this, what this uh, if you look at this ayah, Allahu Akbar, on the Day of Judgment there will be people who will come, and they will try, they will try and fake it. They will say that, oh Allah, mm -mm, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. So Allah will say, okay, angels, bring his books. So they'll bring the book. And you look at his, I wasn't there when this was written. Allah will say, angels, did you, 
Did you see this person? The angel will say, yes, this person did it. I will be with it. You know, like in this, in this um, <laughs> it's funny, in this, uh, part, in, the, in this world, you got some people, they've committed a crime. They've even got caught on CCTV and they'll still deny it. They'll say, that guy's a lookalike. <laughs> it wasn't me. I wasn't there. I didn't do it. They'll fake it. They'll try and put something else. So on the Day of Judgment, there will be some people who will come like that. And they will say, I never saw these angels. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know these books. Even if the earth speaks, they'll say, they don't know what he's saying. So Allah Azza wa Jal will then say, okay. He will say to the mouth to be sealed. The person will mm -hmm, won't be able to speak anymore. Then Allah will say, O oh ear, you now tell me what did you, what did you hear? O oh mouth, O oh tongue, oh, not, not the mouth, sorry, O oh ear, O oh eyes, you tell me what did you see? O oh skins, O oh the hands itself, Allah will say, speak out. Feet, speak out. Skin itself, speak out. What did you touch? What was you next to? What did you actually come in? And all these things will start witnessing and the person is got his mouth closed trying to speak out. After they tell Allah what exactly they did in exact detail, Allah will then say to the mouth, open up. So the mouth will open up. Now instead of saying to Allah now, instead of saying to Allah now, I don't know what you're talking about. I never, he can't say, these are not my ears. He can't say, these were not my eyes. He can't say, these are not my hands. These are not my feet. What he will say is, as soon as his mouth opens, he's going to start cursing. He's going to say, La'natullah. He's going to say, curse to his own hands. Curse his own feet. He's going to curse his own eyes. And is he's going to say, you mad or something? Are you silly? I'm trying to get you saved from punishment of hellfire. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to make sure that I don't get punished and you ears don't get punished and you eyes don't get punished and you hands don't get punished. And you lot witness against me. Oh skin, you witness against me. And then that's when the, the eyes and the ears will say back, that you have got no way of hiding us, stopping us, controlling us. Because antaqan Allahu ladhi antaqa kulla shay. They will say that Surah Fusilat, if you look in ayah number 22, 23, you will find this. Antaqan Allahu ladhi antaqa kulla shay. Allah gave us the ability to speak. Who gave every one of his creatures the ability to speak. So in the world, we are able to speak through our mouths only. You can't speak through your ears, you can't speak through your eyes. Your eyes can't speak, your ears can't speak, your brain can't speak, your skins can't, can't speak. But Allah on the Day of Judgment will give all of these things reason to speak. In fact, animals will be speaking on the Day of Judgment. Animals will be able to speak on the Day of Judgment. The earth, stones, stones, or whatever the earth was, will be able to speak on the Day of Judgment. So, because Allah will give them the permission. إِذَا السَّمَاءُ شَقَّتْ وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ The sky will say, Oh Allah, give me permission. Please give me permission. Let me tell you what did I witness underneath me? What did I see beneath me? What did I watch and observe beneath me? وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ And it will have the right to make this appeal to Allah. وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ When Allah will stretch the earth. وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ and the earth will also take permission from Allah and say, oh Allah, give me permission today to speak about the crimes that happened above me. And Allah, Allah says, وحقت, it had the right to ask Allah to have this permission. And Allah will give it the permission. So all of these, and then Allah will announce, He will say what? Ya yu insan, in, He says to us in the Quran, إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْحًا فَمُلَاقِي Stage by stage through your life, you will continue to roll over until you come and meet me, until you come to see me, and until you come to meet me. Allah is fully aware of what I have done. With Basir, with particularly the word or the, the name of his Basir, Allah has said, use the word Amal. Inna Allah bima ta'amaluna Basir. Surely Allah 
is fully in vision of, fully sees the actions, all the actions. Bima ta'mal, na bima ma is every single action that you do. Now actions that we do, you could say that an action is something that I, I can see your action when you're actually performing. So when you give sadqa, that's an action that I can see. When you do salah, that's an action that I can see. But Allah Azza wa to him, whether you can see it as a physical thing or whether you can't, whether it's an action of the heart, because niya, niya intention is also an action. Niya is also an action. Allah Azza wa Jal, he sees that action. And he gives us advice in the Holy Quran with his servants, that the fact that he is always watching. Now, having said this, what we need to do, brothers and sisters, is, you know, some people, they, you know, I, I know this whole thing about, you know, we being watched at this time, or we being heard at this time, or the big brother is watching, and the cameras are on, and the satellites are watching, and blah, blah, blah. You know, people are honestly, they're losing themselves in thinking about all of this big brother business that is going outside. Allah watches my enemies. Allah watches all the Muslims' enemies. Allah hears every conversation of every Muslim enemy that is out there. You've got to understand that. Allah knows every single enemy that has made any plan. Before he's even done his plan, Allah even knew that. Allah watches their satellites. Forget their satellites watching us. Allah hears their secret conversations. In their, in their buildings that they've got. Whatever you want to call them, whatever group you want to say they are. And I think the young, the youth, they get, really ex they get really sort of passionate about, you know, the secret services and the Illuminati and this and that and whatever there is. The young, you know, love this because it's, it's something which is, you know, secret. Anything that is secret, human beings love it. And on top of that, when you have a secret powerful thing, then it's even more intriguing to know about that, to talk about that. And what I feel is that our youngsters, um, they've lost themselves in this because of them thinking about, you know, how much they, they see and what they do. All you've got to visualize, all you've got to go back to is the Quran talking about the time of Fir'aun. Fir'aun, he had men on every corner no Banu Israel, no person of the followers of Musa salam, before they got released. None of them could say anything, do anything without a soldier seeing it. That's how many soldiers he had. There was, no, there was no place without soldiers there. No place. Whenever they came out of their homes, there were soldiers watching them. Whenever they came out. Even when they were, two of them were having a conversation in a corner, a soldier was listening in. And everything was reported back to the authorities. Fir'aun, even what he did is, he told Haman, who was his mason, he told him to build him a tall tower. And he built him a very tall tower. And from there, Fir'aun would go to that tall tower, stand there. And he would watch the entire Banu Israel working for him. Whatever work, whether he's building the pyramids, whatever it was, Fir'aun would stand there and he would watch. And Fir'aun was able to also keep an eye on them through his magicians. See, he had sorcerers who used to tell him things were going on. Regular meetings he would have, he would call them over and he would say, okay, what do you guys see? You know, like fortune tellers? He would have these, and that's how he found out that Musa salam, was going to be born. Because he used to have regular intervals with them. And one of the intervals he had with them is that these sorcerers said to him, that there's going to be, you know, a, a young boy that will be born in your kingdom this particular year and that boy, if he lives, he's going to destroy your kingdom. So Fir'aun had that given to him by his sorcerers. Now one is physically watching you, one he's got this invisible way of getting communication, whether it's from the jinns or whatever it was that they got the, the sorcerers got it, but he got the information. That there's going to be a boy, that he's going to be born. And imagine how much observe, how much Fir'aun is watching. It's, it's the same, it's, it's, worse than, it's worse than the satellites and what they're doing today. Because there's a limit to what they can do today. 
In those days, Fir'aun did need an ex he did not need an excuse to kill you. He could kill you in broad daylight. His soldiers can kill you. The soldiers used to rape women, rape the Banu Israel, take them away from broad daylight in front of their husbands, go and rape them and bring them back. That's what they used to do. You think it's bad what we've got today? You want to see what the Banu Israel? That's why Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, He reveals so much about Musa and Fir'aun. Because that time will resemble a lot with what we are going through at this moment. So they had all of that going on. So now look at this, look at the power. Now, you know, these Muslims today, they say, you know, the Illuminati, they're watching this, they know this, they're, they're going to make this, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. These people, they lose themselves completely in making themselves feel that this big brother and the Illuminati, whatever, is watching them so much. What you've got to understand, Akhi, and my brother, my sister, is that Allah Azza wa Jal, do you think he doesn't know their plans? He doesn't know what they're doing. He doesn't see what they do. He doesn't hear what they say. He's got all the plans to himself, all of them, before they even occurred. He knew what they're going to do. He knew how far they're going to go. He knew how many of them are going to get together. Every single one of the enemies of Islam, Allah saw every single action of his life. And Allah heard every single thing he said in his whole life. Every conversation, every meeting they had, Allah was there. Allah Azza wa Jal heard everything, Allah saw everything, Allah knew everything. Now when you know that and you put your trust in Allah, just like Allah then with Fir'aun thought, okay, I'm going to wipe out one generation. So what did he do? When the sorcerers told him this year, the, that, that boy is going to be born, he said, okay, that's it, fine. All the boys that are born this year, wherever you find them, newborn baby boys, kill them. Told the soldiers, go out there, kill them. I can imagine, imagine that, you know, you think they're bad today. Are they going around killing all the, you know, killing innocent people in front of their faces, you know, taking, snatching their newborn babies away, killing them and leaving them dead. Now, are they going that far? That, they haven't gone that far. Okay, there's, there's fighting going on across the world. There's murdering going on. There's rape going on. But it's not this bad. How this will, can you imagine one whole year? They're going around, any newborn baby boy of the Banu Israel was killed. So there must have been thousands and thousands of babies that were killed. Thousands and th tens of thousands of them killed. Then, Allah wants to show them who's in charge. Allah wants to show them who's in charge. So they made all these plans. He saw his, his soldiers are on the guard. He, they're going every single night, finding out which woman is pregnant. And as soon as she delivers, they're going in there and seeing, is it a girl or a boy? They don't need permission. They're just going straight inside the doors, seeing if it's a girl or a boy. If it's a boy, they take it away, kill it. If it's a girl, they let it live. And they're watching all the women. How many women pregnant? They've got a count of the women that are pregnant. So they know that Musa salam's mother is pregnant as well. So they've got, a, they've got a, their eyes on her. And she's, she's waiting for her moment that she's going to deliver. When Allah Azza wa Jal, He wants to save someone, can anyone come in front of Allah? Can anyone come? So what happens is, they're killing boys, they're killing boys, they're killing boys until Musa Alayhi Salaam's mother, she gives birth. When Musa Alayhi Salaam's mother gives birth, then they, they got the news that she's gone through labor. So the soldiers are coming down. Musa salam's mother gets scared. So it's just a newborn. She puts it straight into to a basket. And she runs outside of a house with the baby boy in the basket. She's trying to run away from the soldiers. And then the soldiers are catching up. So she comes right to the river. And she's fearing, they're going to kill my son. So Allah says in the Quran, I put into her heart, throw the baby into the river. Throw the basket into the river. And she, and, and she was fearing and she had grief. Allah records all that in the Quran. She had grief, she had fear. And with the soldiers coming up towards her, they're going to catch her soon. She just threw the basket into the river. Now, if she threw something into the river, right, the soldiers came right up to her. Now, She's delivered a baby, right? Now, if they've 
if they wanted to see what she threw, they're going to be looking at the river with where the current is flowing, right? Where the current is flowing. So the soldiers are now looking at the way the current is flowing and there's nothing there. Because Allah took the basket against the current upwards. The water is flowing da downwards and Allah took the basket upwards. Because Allah wants to take it to one place. Now look at it. When Allah wants to do something, who are the Illuminati? Who, are, who in the world are these Freemasons and these others? When Allah wants to do something, they can do as many th plans as they want. So the basket now moves upwards. Moves up, 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 up. Now Allah wants to give it to particular people. So what does he do? He makes, at that moment, he makes Fir'aun and his wife Asya, they come out for a walk. So they're walking. And, they, and Allah brings both of them right to the river bank. And they're walking along the river bank. They're having a nice day, nice stroll. Suddenly, this basket comes all the way up to the river bank and gets stuck at a, at a tree. So then Asya, uh, she, she runs. And she sees that there's a, there's a basket. She picks the basket up and there's a newborn baby. Newborn boy. Now it's a boy. What did Firaun say for all the boys for this whole year? What did he say? Kill him. And Allah says in the Quran, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً minni." The one who's in charge of this order to kill all the baby boys. The one who made all the soldiers go and kill every single one. The one who made his soldiers stand there, watch them, he heard the sorcerers. The one who is fearing his kingdom is going to go, so he has to kill all these boys. Allah says, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً minni." He says, O Musa, your, your love, I put it into Asia, I, I put it into Fir'aun. Now first Asya saw it, when Asya saw it, she said, she picked up the boy, she said, Firon, me and you, we don't have children. Me and you, we don't have children. No one knows who's, which boy is this. It's lost boy. No one knows which boy is this. So can you please just have mercy on this boy? We'll make this our own child. I will tell everybody this is our son. Now one, he's thinking, one out of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of boys. What's the chance of this one being the one that ruins my kingdom? Almost next to nothing. So Allah puts love for Musa salam, in his greatest enemy's heart. And Allah says, okay, Firaun, you wanted to kill him? Okay, I'm going to make you nurture him. <laughs> you wanted to kill him, I'm going to make you feed him. I'm going to make you clothe him. I'm going to make you give him water and love him and play with him. I'm going to make you do that. I'm going to make you like his father. You want to kill him? Go and try and kill him. So now he says, okay, let's take him. So he takes him. Now, when he takes him, now Asya, she's never had children, so she's got no milk. The women in the palace, none of them are breastfeeding. And so they, and, and Musa is crying. He has, you know, young baby. He's crying. <laughs> Firon's going mad. He says, come bring, bring these, you know, bring, bring one of these women who's got, who's got milk and feed him. So the, all the women, the, the, a lot of women come. One after the other, one after the other. Whichever one gives her breast to Musa is not, is not taking it. Now he's not taking us any single woman's milk. One after the other, one after tens and tens of tens of women. If you don't think, what kind of kid have I, have I bought here inside my family? But Asiya is not letting Firan do anything to this kid. She wants to keep the kid. So there's got to be a way. Now suddenly there's a little girl there. Who is this little girl? This girl is Musa sister. And she had followed the basket. She had seen Firaun and Asi walk. She saw them pick it up. She saw them took it in the palace. So she came up. She said, if you allow me, I can tell you, there's one woman I know. She's a very good woman. And there's no babies that ever refuse her milk. If you tell me, I'll tell that woman to come. She can try. Now they're fed up. There's kids crying. Wah, wah. There's the noise is doing them in. So then they say, okay, go and bring that woman. Who is that woman? That is Musa's own mother. Yesterday she was fearing, just a moment ago she's fearing, what's going to happen to my kid? 
Allah brought her own child right in front of her. She, she sees Musa and then she gives him milk. And now the mother is reunited with the son in the enemy's house. Every day she will come and see her son. Every day she will milk her son. Every day she will play with her son. Allah Azza wa Jal shows who's in charge. You want to say, you want to say who's in charge? All these things that they've got around there. Brothers and sisters, all the, I don't care how many big brothers out there watching us and listening to us on satellites and this and that. Who's in charge? The one in charge is Allah. Finish. The one in charge is Allah. When Allah wants to do it, <laughs> who's going who's gonna to do anything? Now, Musa alayhi salam, you look at the whole plan of how Allah, Allah azza wa jal brings Musa alayhi salam up and how he takes him back to the Banu Israel. How he makes him feel that he's part of them. How he goes to the through all these things. I haven't got the time to say all of it. Inshallah, one day we'll, call, we'll, we'll cover the stories of the MBI, Inshallah. But what my point is that though others watch us, though others listen to us, the one that is in charge and the one that counts is who? It is Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's the one that we have to have fear of. There's a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that whoever Whoever fears, whoever fears the creation, uh, no, no, whoever doesn't fear Allah, whoever doesn't fear Allah will fear his creation. Whoever doesn't fear Allah will fear Allah's creation or some of his creation, they will fear him. And whoever fears Allah, the creation will fear them. You understand that? Whoever doesn't fear Allah, they will, they will fear, have fear for some of Allah's creation. Whichever those people are, they will have some fear in their hearts. But whoever actually fears Allah and has true fear in their heart for Allah, then the creation will fear them. The creation will have fear of them. So that is, that is what we ha are as believers, that we have Allah as well as fear. Now, I know Muslims come and say this, that I only fear Allah, I only fear Allah. You can only... Put that to the test when the test comes. You can say that as many times as you want. But if you only fear Allah, then when people start talking bad about you, it shouldn't affect you. Madh and dham. Whether somebody praises you, whether somebody is against you, whether somebody criticizes you, they both will be exactly the same. Madh and dham. They will be exactly the same. Because Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, he's the one that I need to be aware of and he's the one that I will be I, I will always have in my mind and he's the one watching me, he's the one seeing me and khalas when a person does a good action he doesn't need to tell others about it when he has the full belief Allah is Basir, Allah is Samir full belief, Allah watches me, Allah hears me now who, who needs to see my action who needs to know how many rakats of tahajjud I did who needs to know whether I woke up last night or not who needs to know how much sadaqah I gave who needs to hear how much I'm going to give? Who needs to know uh, and, and see whether I did one action or, not, not, uh, or another action? No one needs to see. If the, if the one who's supposed to hear it, the one who's supposed to see it, has seen it and heard it, khalas. That's sincerity, that's ikhlas. But when human beings need to make others hear it, they need to make others see it, then that's a lack of sincerity. That's when they don't have the full belief. Or the belief is there, but it's not complete. The belief is there, but it's not complete. Brothers and sisters, you can pass your exam by getting a C. You passed. Fine. No one's going to say you failed. You passed. But you've passed with a C, with 60%. You can pass with a B, 70%. You can pass with an A, 80 to 85%. You can pass with A star, 95%. Passing is passing. Fine. From C to A star is passing. Believing in Allah hears me, Allah watches me, is believing. Fine. But the belief can get deeper. And that's where you get a C for it, or you get a B for it, or you get an A for it, or you get an A star for it. The Rasulullah uh, Rasool, uh, when he told his Sahaba about Allah seeing everything and Allah hearing everything, they went over this so many times that there was no doubt whatsoever in any of their actions throughout the day and throughout the night that Allah is watching them, Allah is hearing them. That's why they got to the rank of Ihsan. Ihsan is, and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu. That you get, to this, you get to the stage that you're doing every action, everything from your heart, from your mouth, from your, from your eyes, from your ears, everything is done with the full belief and knowledge all the time that, Allah is, that, that I'm doing it because 
you know, it's Allah's there, or that I know that Allah Azza wa Jalla is watching me all the time. That is Ihsan. And when a person gets to that, then that is that is that is kamil faith. That is faith that is complete. Jazakumullah khair. ذكر علم ونور الحاملات سنا ونور والرسمات هنا سرور يا حلوات الكاسنين